Hello everybody, my name is Frigid Hyperion, and welcome back to the Wilds of Wild Mount. This will now be session 19, and joining me today are Lily as Windchime, uh, Kale as Brine, Rocky as Edward, and Quinn, of course, will be joining us as a Nemo, but during the second part he will be un unavailable. And then I am Moonzik, and then Emily is our lovely dungeon master. Take it away. I didn't talk about this ahead of time, and I probably should, but let me roll real quick here. Win! What happened last time? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what we're doing? Um... Uh... <laughs> uh, I need a reminder. <laughs> I can do it. I just need a reminder for the beginning. I think that I can take it out. We, uh, you weren't there. You were, uh, in the tub. We essentially discussed what would happen, uh... Uh, yes. I was absent for the first half of it. We essentially discussed what would happen, sent some letters, and... When sent to retrieve letters. Yeah. Uh, Munta got um, a haircut. <laughs> Munta got a haircut, came back, he looked magnificent, by the way. Edward Wind was chime. left alone in a magic shop. Edward was And complained left about the economy of wizards. <laughs> we met uh, uh, a sheep, uh, and then there were some people that were, that were mad at us. No, they weren't mad at us. They were looking for the sheep. They were mad at the sheep. And then instead of, like, just giving the sheep away, which we totally could have done, I don't know why. I mean, and, it, you know. And prior to that, the most uh, n uh, noteworthy uh, is that uh, Enema won a drinking contest. Oh, yeah, 100%. The most noteworthy of the entire situation. Of course. Um, yeah, so we made the sheep invisible and, uh, and brought it back to the island. And I think that's where we left it off. I believe so. I believe so. Thank you for everybody who chipped <laughs> in for that one. <laughs> Thank um, you. I appreciate the help. A, as you approach Firewatch Island, as you approach Firewatch Island, uh, the sheep uh, who was uh, with you, in, as you guys were making your way back and forth, um, it has oh, since God. become visible, um, as invisibility has worn off. That took an hour? When? I mean, two how? Hours. It takes two hours. It's a trip. I know, <laughs> I know I'm... You gotta paddle with the I'm just gonna move my character over to where it would be. There we go. Mm. Hello, sheep. Hello, sheep. Alrighty. Um, everybody on shore, um, the sheep says to you, uh, um, <clears throat> with, uh, with the last bits of remains <laughs> of his spell, he's going to have this conversation with you, because it definitely would have lasted this long. Um, it's <gasps> a hot bird spell. It can last as ever long as it wants. Absolutely. Um, yeah. oh, thank you all for um, helping me out back there. I would have been doomed had you not intervened. And quite a clever bit of magic you have. Yes, and quite. you, in a ship's body with a rare squirrel being hunted by a beastmaster and a bunch of wolves. Ah, uh, yes, yes. We really um, pulled the wool over the eyes of the people that were chasing you. <laughs> yes, you you all did a wonderful job. Um, uh, I suppose I was slightly interrupted before. Um, I'm Fenrir Shrinebright. Fenrir Shrinebright. Uh, Shrinebright. Um, I would like to ask your 
help, seeing as how clever you all were in getting me out of that situation, to grab an extremely powerful magical artifact from a dangerous and possibly insane wizard. <laughs> uh, Chief's going to point at Edward. <laughs> I mean, what particular artifact are you looking for? I, I, I believe this might take precedence. Would this particular wizard happen to be the one that turned you into a sheep? Unfortunately, yes. Um, although it was my... I suppose I should start from the top. Two years ago, I, um, I had owned a and worked out of a... Power on uh, the far back end of Broken Bank. Um, I, of course, am not a wizard of any small talent, um, and I specialize in transmutation magic. My most prized possession, and probably the key to all of my success, was an incredibly rare wand of true polymorph. Well, one fateful night, I entered my meditative trance to find my apprentice, Ahmed Noak, standing over me. He was clutching the wand. I immediately demanded to know what the boy was doing. But the only noise I was able to produce was a bar. The wizard, um, kept me a prisoner in my own garden, virtually. He was Forced, I was forced to graze on nothing but grass and buttercups and while well, hungry wolves and other beasts um, looked on. Last night, I felt hope for the first time in many, many months. When Noak left uh, the, the house without uh, closing my door. Shine bright. Me. I snuck in. Uh, made my way to an old bookshelf and tore down the scroll that and clenched between my teeth. And that was the scroll that I was able to give to you, from which you were able to activate what you found. So, oh, in order... Yes, please, so uh, any questions? This wizard that's got you trapped here in your own body in the form of a sheep, is he particularly powerful? Is he insane? What, what was his particular motive for doing so? I have no idea why he was so hell-bent on stealing the wand and the power from me. He had merely been my assistant for several years, probably a decade or two. Uh, he was growing... I would say he was growing a little unsettled uh, towards the end, I cannot deny, by asking me all of these things about how long it would be until he would become a full wizard himself and just ask general questions along the, those lines. I simply told him that he wasn't ready. I mean, he needed to apprentice at least for another several decades. And then he would get all up in arms about, oh, his lifespan isn't that long, he is merely a human. Balls wallach, I'd say. You have to have time to study the things before you can suddenly go out and change the world, as I'm sure you all know. His beady eyes glance at all of you. This um. incredibly young group. <laughs> I, I don't know. This incredibly young group minus Cheem. Minus like, Brian is incredibly young for an elf. How old is Cheem? Like sixties ish, oh but a human. God. So like, wait, young. is he your age than your other face? Uh, oh, Muzik himself. Yeah, he's like in his early twenties. Yeah, so incredibly oh, young. 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 Yeah, well, let's, still, let's he's looking at four young adults and an old man. <laughs> right. Oh. Either way, he sees. Either I, way, I don't know. If Edward. I would, if I would like to return to my physical form, um, I need more than anything another dose of true polymorph. 
which means I need access to my wand. Um, of course, um, Noke is still residing in my old home. Um, it's just southeast of, excuse me, it's just north uh, east of town. Um, unfortunately, from what I have been able to see, he keeps the wand on him at all times and only leaves the house if he absolutely has to. Is there a back entrance to this house? Ah, uh, there is no back entrance. Um, as you, uh, will see once we go there, he kind of, like, suggests, um, as you'll see once we get there, it is a beautiful home. I built it myself with a couple of, uh, with hands. Um, it is mostly within the trees. Um, it more like a tree house. It has three platforms, um, and is is quite beautiful. Um, does it have stairs? It does have stairs, yes. Okay. And a couple of bridges that connects the uh separate uh um towers. Does it have does it have swinging ropes? A couple of swimming swinging ropes. But oh. most of them are fixed to places. Um yeah. Kid to be a party crasher and genuinely am really interested in uh, attempting to sneak into the home of a possibly homicidal mage. But um, I, I, I have just one tiny question. Um, are we sure about this? About how from the person we just met to uh, overtake a stranger that we have no idea what their side of the story is? That sounds exactly up our alley. I'm with Brian on this one. <laughs> it, um, it does seem kind of... I mean... It absolutely bad It feels like thing. we have an incomplete story here Hi. among the fact that uh, this mage sort of threw a temper tantrum uh, over the fact that he was subjected to more years of his tutelage. That aside, that is a wand of true polymorph. I do not want to end up like a sheep. Oh, you all will be fine. If we could just get a hold of it before anybody else um, is able to cast with it. It should be no problem. Could I you, mean, um, by could... any chance, tell us how that wand works? Ah, yes, of course. You simply... Mark a, uh, a swish of the wrist in the air, and using a uh, a good bit of uh, um, uh, using a good bit of uh, a polyplanal transwave theory, of course, um, we, you are able to force the form of somebody else into um, that of another. Um, Will that be an animal, like myself, or um, even something simple, like a, a, a bed to a dragon? It doesn't matter. And anybody can use this weapon? Yes, of course, there is a, um, a level of finesse required, and uh, the study of the arcane, and I did mention the uh, polyplanal transwave theory, having a good grasp of that. Um, uh, does Edward know anything about this polyplanal transport theory, especially if it's relating to planal transport? Um, yes, you, you are familiar with polyplanal, uh, vaguely familiar with polyplanal transwave yeah. theory. Uh, basically, uh, basically it states that um, all planes are basically stacked up on top of each other, um, like a, like baklava. <laughs> and, uh, yes. uh, like bayonet like bayonetta. The, the theory is that if you were able to uh uh split between um uh split between the layers and basically have a quote breakthrough, um you're able to pull elements um from other uh uh, from other planes and multiverses and even timelines to uh, uh, affect the current uh, timeline. Okay. And you wish to have the wand and therefore 
but you have no hands in which to wield it, so one of us would be able to use it. Huh. I would assume so, yes. Yes, you would no. be able to. At least not me. I am not proficient I would... in magic. He glances around. I would say that one right there, the one on fire. He probably would be able to do it. <laughs> the one on fire! <laughs> I, do, I do dedicate myself pretty wholly to the arcane studies. As I'd I be say, happy I to be to... obliged to help you in this endeavor. Um, especially a mage of such caliber, <sighs> such as yourself. Thank you, thank you. And, of course, I am a quite powerful wizard myself, and I would be able to um, compensate you for your time and efforts. Um. What? What? Well, uh, uh, all right. If that's the case, well... Massive... L let's let's do it. Well, point us to the uh, house. The tree house. Old <laughs> boss. Ah, uh, back that way on broken base. <laughs> oh God. Are Are you feeling okay, Mister Sheep? I don't <clears throat> think the spell has much time left. <laughs> he uh uh he says, I um, I will. I promise you that I will get us there, even though I might not be able to <laughs> One quick question. What's your favorite animal? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well, dog dress first. <laughs> Set off in the morning. Well, fair enough. Um... I do suppose we could go on and find this wand of true polymorph once we all prepare for the journey ahead. Um, do you think we should keep the the sheep in some place safe? Yeah, he's you gone. Know? He's eating grass. <laughs> ah. this. Well, as long as our friend doesn't turn into a panther again, I think we're fine. I haven't noticed any natural predators. You know, except from the periton, the massive hordes of You know what? Maybe he should come inside. <laughs> <laughs> now, it has been a long night. We've all been drinking at least somewhat. Edward, water. Which has to be incredibly hard for him. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how you managed to keep your constitution like that. Not sure either. I odd. Well, shall we get going? Um, I suppose we could probably prepare a couple of things before we go. Are we going in the middle of the night? Is this like a stealth? Mode. He's a human, so I'm assuming he doesn't need to trance. I think it'd be tactically beneficial in order to go under the cover of night, given True, that they can't don't... really see in the night and they require sleep. Yeah, I agree. We could I also to, think... We could either go tonight and do a mm -hmm. short rest, or we could go tomorrow night. I think we should Bye. go tomorrow night, but I'm still a little tipsy. Yeah, yeah. that Chardonnay really hit me hard. <laughs> Wait, you guys are still kind of drunk, aren't you? Well, I suppose we can wait till tomorrow. I see. Edward, I su you mean to tell me that the water's not affecting you at all? <laughs> Do you um, just because yeah. I'm a fire genasi doesn't mean that I immediately wrinkle up at the touch of water. <laughs> Splashes Edward with I'm water. I'm still more or less <laughs> anatomically similar to a human. I just happen to be imbued with he, the affinity of fire. With Edward standing Ooh, like... Watch, and, watch it steam <laughs> off his skin. Yeah, yeah. While Edward's standing there in the water, Shame is just going to splash water up at him. <laughs> Edward does not look amused. <laughs> Ryan looks very amused. Um, all right. Edward? I'm gonna press a digitate the water off of him. 
Edward, can you help me uh, get to my room? I'm a little woozy on my feet. And she's going to make a big show of uh, grabbing onto his arm. <laughs> oh. oh. All right. I can help. Mm -hmm. right, Everybody's sure. like, I ship it! I ship it! <laughs> after, after all, you did bring her onto the crew. <laughs> She brought As herself yeah, onto the crew, is, and then she, she decided to criticize us for letting strangers onto the crew. <laughs> As As Moonzik said, she is your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know how any of that is true, but... Ah, uh, okay. uh, don't worry about the details, honey, come on. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is a pretty big detail to be worrying about. And they yes, let's, let's focus on a different detail. And as soon as um, she dr she kind of like half drags him away, she's going to drop all of the act and be like, "So, is this a suicide mission, or possibly the chance to get the most broken item ever imagined into this world?" I mean, I don't think it would bode well to, um, steal things from wizards. He's a sheep. <laughs> he needs our help. I mean, I... I don't know. I don't think it would be ethically... I would be morally inclined to be stealing such an artifact of great power. Oh, I wasn't saying... Especially I was more uh, saying we turned a rock into a larger creature and turned creature with second charge into literal mound of diamond. What? What are you talking about? But he mentioned you could turn a rock into a dragon. Why not rock into elephant, elephant into diamond? I mean, I don't think we would possess the skill in order to maneuver or... We have a wand! I don't think if we, we would possess the skill to manipulate human. such a complicated thing to do with the wand. I mean, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, and I generally try not to tell anyone else this, but... I, I have dabbled a little bit in um, uh, transmutational effects and arcane effects relating to the transformation of different animals and different beings into different other things and I, I, I can tell you pretty confidently that it requires a lot of precision and a lot of skill that I don't possess in order to turn something into something that you desire. It was already a great deal and stretched my abilities to the fullest of its capabilities just to be able to turn one person or one creature, one person into a creature that they happen to like. I don't think I would be able to do something that would be able to turn rocks into diamonds or something. All right, I'll defer to you on that. You're okay. underestimating the abilities, my abilities, you're underestimating the difficulty of magic of this caliber. Well, if that's the case and our uh, enemy is a master of such magics. How fucked are we? I mean, given the fact that, like, you know, he turned a wizard into a sheep instead of, I would say, a whole bunch of different other things that wouldn't be much easier to capture. Uh, I'd say it's quite likely that the enemy is not 100% a magic master that's fully able to wield this one to its full capabilities. So Assuming the worst case scenario, there. I would say the wand probably has enough charges that only a couple of us would be irreversibly transmuted. Which, given the odds, is not technically bad, although it would be detrimental for any one of us to be irrevertibly transmuted into such All a right. creature. Be it sheep or other creature out of this person's control. Um... I'd say it's still very, very threatening and very, very deadly, regardless of whether or not they were skilled in such a tool. Uh, all, of course, of all, of this, all of this, um, speaking from a tactical standpoint, would be completely negated and 
we could see no repercussions of our consequences if we were able to retrieve the wand and present it back to this cheap mage uh, who I would assume has a fair bit more control um, in order to be able to revert our forms once we return this wand to them. So, in essence, make sure you don't get transformed because I don't think he has hands for the wand. I think that would probably bode well for all of us. Um, although, right. if it comes down to it, uh, if it comes down to it, uh, I would hope we would have some sort of fail-safe plan. I'd like to get some rest tonight. Maybe tomorrow I'll think of a way or a contingency in order to respond to such a situation if that opportunity arises. All right. Well, terrifying implications. Thank you for setting my mind a little bit at ease. <laughs> I, I, I know, I know, I know people usually tell me that thinking about problems, for me at least, thinking about problems um, makes it worse and makes you more panicky and jittery. But quite honestly, I find that it's quite calming in some capacity in order to think about a problem thoroughly before approaching it. Honey? Honey again? Yep. <laughs> thinking. <laughs> That's, that's, Thinking about things calms me. That's honestly really, really cute. <laughs> and she's gonna look up at him. Imp is smile on her face, and she's Edward gonna is like completely flabbergasted. Has no clue how to act. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm heading off to bed. I see you in the morning. As those two go off. Like th like moments uh, ago, uh, Moonsake is, uh, turns to Naaman and says, "Well, y you've had the most drink out of anybody, uh, most amount of drinks out of anybody. Do you need any help getting back to the manor or fort?" <laughs> I'm doing great. I don't know what you're talking. About. <laughs> I I so I so drunk. I I sober. <laughs> All right. Lesser restoration to purge the alcohol out of your body. <laughs> you, you, it's too late. <laughs> also, I don't think we have access to that, do we? No, we do, cleric. Oh. Oh, yeah, it's level two. I thought that was level three for some reason. Nope. All right. Well, let's head back to the fort and get a good night's sleep then. And then just prepare for our operation tomorrow night. Okay. <laughs> so slow. Roll, roll, roll an athletics check to get up the bay. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm not even gonna move my token. It's too big. Yeah, <laughs> I mean we're gonna be unless we have more like errands to run the next day before our mission. I don't think we really need to anyway. I'm just gonna plot mine back at the kitchen table. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I suppose I better hit the long rest here. Yep. I might oh yeah, I should hit probably dice. hit the long rest. So the next morning, you all awake. Um, and uh, wind chime, you've immediately noticed something. As you glanced out the window of the second story of the... Uh, uh, of the fort, um, you, you see sitting on the, uh, on the, the dock, um, looking out over the, uh, the ocean and the spires that stick out, um, in it, uh, on its, towards Broken Bank, um, you see a fluffy, uh, white sheep on the, uh, on the edge of the pier. <laughs> I know. It's like the first day of school. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how that's. Any that... <laughs> She's gonna bring out a, a a roll of 
bread for him with some jam. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, he looks at you, and he nods his head. Here you go, Mr. Sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even call him by his name, you just call him Mr. Sheep. <laughs> Mr. Sheep. Oh, hello, Mr. Sheep. You don't mind if we call you Mr. Sheep, right? He glares at you with beady eyes. <laughs> it's it's a sheep. He bows for he is a sheep. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'm only poking fun. Um, I have a question. When it is... When you're not actively using the folding boat, is it just set up in... Or no, is it always in someone's inventory? It should mm -hmm. theoretically always be in somebody's inventory. Yeah. We should, we should deal with that now. Do we want to put it in the bag of folding? I, it doesn't I was, well anyways. I was gonna say, I was it, always, always under the assumption it was in Windchime's inventory. Always has been. Always has been, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense since they wouldn't shame was here for yeah. the long taking care of the island and stuff. Go to boat now. And it was her idea. Well, I guess it wasn't just her idea. But. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's in your inventory, Winchon. Yeah, hot pink swan boat. I am a captain of my own ship. <laughs> there you go. The, the hat suits you now. <laughs> the hat suits now. Yeah. Uh, we're going to name the boat Swaddled. <laughs> no. Swaddled the boat. No. No, I'm, I'm calling it... Uh... We can't call it the Pink it, Panther. No, I'm calling it uh... Bodie McDuckface. <laughs> yeah, alright. It's a swan. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That's why it's funny. Joe Swanson? It's like swan, but the picture is of um, a flamingo swan. boat. A <laughs> flamingo. We could we could call it Joe Swanson on the account that it has no legs. Swanled sunk. Oh god. Okay, back <laughs> on right. track. Is there anything that you guys would like to do? Uh, question. Uh, I know this is technically like pushing the boundaries of unseen servant, but could I have unseen servant mimic the exact gesture? Um, with an item held, uh, if I were ever to be turned into a sheep and were unable to mimic the thing, like, you know, the gesture so in order to... your experience with magic and, like, actually using it, your, uh, Unseen Servants would not be able to, yeah. uh, to cast spells even using, like, a wand like such, because while the wand... Uh, chooses the wizard, Edward. Um, yeah. There is a level of, like, magical energy. It just helps you channel things. Um, and mechanically, what this means is it would require an arcana yeah. check. And okay, yeah. while you yeah. hypothetically could have your Unseen Servant perform by using a spell the odds that it would be able to pull on the weave properly is none, basically. The good, because yeah, it's the slim. Good, right? The good news is is that uh, I do have the ability to make arcana too. checks. Uh, I have one other question uh, based off of that. Uh, is this just for this specific wand? Or is this for all wands, including uh, regularly given out to uh, helper items like... I think certain wands just magic require attunement or certain, something. Certain different. wands require attunement, yeah. Yeah. And then you could just use like, it normally. Technically, technically, technically speaking, this wand would require attunement. Like, if you were to wield it long term... Uh, it takes a short rest. What? Well, it takes an hour. Right? Uh, it takes an hour, which yeah, is a short rest, but isn't a short rest because you don't gain the benefits of... Uh, a short rest matter. Here, no, you much? still do. You can attune to an item while short resting. Um, um, to either way, the point is that based off of the uh, polyplanal uh, transwave theory, um, <laughs> that you know, <laughs> which is definitely a real thing, uh, <laughs> not just a bunch of made up sciencey words. Nope. Um, yeah, it's, words. you know it's real because uh, Edward uh, definitely knew about this. <laughs> 
term and um, before it was brought up. And, uh, yeah, basically, you would gather that, based off what he was saying, the kind of magic you would require would require a uh, an Arcana roll to be able to uh, achieve it properly. But and there it- could be other factors that change it. And this could or may not be exclusive to magic items, because magic items, all of them, operate in many different ways. Magic items are weird. Fair enough. Sometimes, sometimes magic items are just I'm just going items. to assume sometimes that sometimes they require uh, you. I'm just going to assume that uh, this is a uh, magical item that requires attunement by a level uh, 14 or higher wizard. Most you likely. have to find out. Let's. It doesn't matter. Well, we'll until have to you identify it first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Let's go get it. We'll get there when we get there. <laughs> yep. Ba. He ba. says ba. at you all. <laughs> I suppose we should probably put this sheep out of its duress uh, by, you know, what? going in. <laughs> what? <laughs> and, 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 and going to find the one to restore him to his former shape. I'm fucking you comically, sorry! <laughs> you I, comically, I comically see a hoof come, you, Yeah, you comically see a hoof come up and wipe the sweat off. <laughs> um, actually, um... <laughs> May I roll to see if I know anything about true polymorph? Uh, sure. Because I did study, so... God damn it, there are uh, two Edwards what would on that the map be? again. Arcana? Yeah. Alright. Did it just... All like right. ritual cast. God, it just closed. Arcana. That's a 15 Arcana check. I'm sorry, uh, roll 20 just closed for me. Give me a moment. Yep. While uh, she's bringing that back up, at uh, Rocket, can you delete one of your Edwards? <laughs> <laughs> They're spawning <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> that's your unseen. Uh, no, that's it, my simulacro guys. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, Rocky is busted. He's uh, what we don't know is he's the real big bad guy. He's got uh, multiple simulacrums and multiple clones already. Oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you just don't know it yet. But, uh, yep. I have like, you know, I've I have an entire like facility dedicated to cloning, back, where every single one is just a row of clones lined up. <laughs> oh, it's your whole manner. That being said, operation. Um, you, uh, while you were studying, um, while you were while you were in your studies, you actually had to take a three thousand level course that uh, was. <laughs> was studying higher level mag- magics and their properties not how to cast them obviously but like mm-hmm. what they were um and you are familiar with true polymorph uh basically one creature or non-magical object that you can see within range you can transform that creature into a different creature the creature into an object or the object into a creature the object must be their must be neither worn or carried by another creature, obviously. Um, the transformation lasts for the duration or until the target drops to zero hit points or dies. Um, if you concentrate on the spell for the full duration, um, <clears throat> if you concentrate on the spell for the full duration, the transformation lasts until the spell. The spell has no effect on a shape changer or a creature with zero hit points, and an unwilling creature can make a wisdom saving throw if it succeeds and isn't, spe- isn't affected by the spell. If you turn a creature into another kind of creature, a new form can be any kind you choose, whose challenge rating is equal to or less than the target or its level if the target doesn't have a challenge rating. Uh, the target's game statistics, including mental mental ability scores, are uh, replaced with the statistics of its new form, um, and it retains its alignment and personality. Um, and the target assumes the hit points. Of its, I'm not going to read this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We know what we, most polymorph does. It's, it's literally um, just polymorph, but permanent. Yeah, right, you can concentrate I, the, for an additional hour to make it the effects permanent. Yeah. So, and it could be any creature. Brian, uh, I was, I, I knew what it was. I wanted Brian to know if my character would know, right? Yeah. Brian's going to immediately perk up and go. Wait a second. Um, putting it out of its misery might actually work unless the wand works differently. Not to shake your head if uh, the polymorph is different than the one I'd have learned about in class. Well, you know, I sh- cheats sh- and like, intelligence. You, you also, you also know. Just to hand wave over this, 
if you kill this guy, he has been true polymorph. So this is his form now. The the spell was concentrated. It was cast two years ago, right? Um, mm -hmm. like this, yeah. he is, by all intents and purposes, a uh, she. sheep. Um. So killing him just kills him. Just kills him. Yes. Yeah. People die when they are killed. Yeah. That you're uh, thinking of regular polymorph. I, I'm thinking of this. I'm thinking of uh, true polymorph too, because for the no, first true hour, um, no, yeah, but it's been yeah, far longer than an hour. Zero, and then it says the spell effect is permanent. So I was interested as to how you do rule it. Yeah, because the whole point the, the spell is spell effect could be permanent. Therefore, yeah. Yeah. Um, no. If if it does not, you 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 know that if the target were to drop to hero at this point in time, All if right. the target were to drop to zero hit points. Yeah, instant okay. death. That's that's how that's working now. Okay. Uh, the uh. second question is, um, Mister Sheep, um, would not dispel magic do the same deal? <laughs> we don't have access to it. It's not. I, I would say no. You have magic doesn't work anymore. It's not a, an effect that's under the effect of concentration anymore. It's been a permanent thing, as if it was something altered, similar to how dispelling uh, stone shape wouldn't actually revert the stone back to its original form. Bah. <clears throat> he stands next to Edward. Bah. bah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will. If he's a sheep, and his brain is also a sheep's brain. Yeah, his brain is like three inch. So how does he understand how human speech? He was a really, really <laughs> smart wizard. <laughs> Magic. Magic. See, this it's is why I didn't. It, it's right suspend in the text. Your, if you concentrate. If you concentrate on this spell for the full duration, the transformation lasts until it's dispelled. So the wand does a specific type. Oh. Well, you just, got me there. Just let it just ride. It. I'm just, like, do, like, oh, because, <laughs> again, I really would like to continue with this. Because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have to leave all, we're, all we're saying is that the wand does a slightly different version of it. There we go. It's fixed. Sure. The, timeline, the timelines operate. No, Kale, no. enough rules lawyering. I'm not. No. Mm. You are. <laughs> I'm <laughs> trying to figure out if there is an inventive way. I use the rule. Got him. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out if there's an inventive way. This is why I'm asking this cheap questions to mm, make. There's sure. no point in asking questions. We don't have access to dispel it. Well, I mean, it's got to be easier than uh, pulling a wand out of a mad wizard's pocket. But wand out of a mad wizard's pocket, we go. And she is in the boat, and waiting for everybody else to get in the boat. Sheep is already in the boat. As soon as- well, I guess it's the boat out, because Windchime, you do have access to it. I'm in the water if it's not out. I am sending you uh, that. She pulls it out, inflates it, or whatever. <laughs> he oh says, <laughs> <laughs> We take an hour blowing air into it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> and we okay. gain a level of exhaustion. <laughs> it, 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 it's self-inflatable. Oh, God. <laughs> How do you think it gets so small? I cannot argue with your <laughs> infallible logic. <laughs> but all right. It up, signs it down. Gets it all in the water. Everybody aboard? Yeah, Captain. Aye, aye. No, she's not oh. here with us. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Nemo, the boat's leaving without you. I'm sorry, my character just doesn't move. <laughs> <laughs> He's fighting with the wolf within. Give him a second. <laughs> sorry, Panther. He should be on a new page, actually. Yep. Yes, we are. Everybody magically piles into the boat, because um, you definitely nope. all can fit. Don't worry about the and... We're all piling, yeah. too. I like your funny <laughs> yeah. magic word, man. 
Bard's <laughs> like a funny magic That's what a bard is. That's what a bard is. Okay. Um, as you approach uh, Broken Bank, um, you all get off um, at your proper um, ducking station. Um, while you're in town, do you do anything? I'm going to be on the lookout for a uh, certain very scary uh, ranger who might be looking for a sheep. Um, go ahead and. Okay. I'll be working on it. Uh, yeah, you're you are working on it. Um, and the uh, the sheep bounds off in front of you as you all follow um, the uh, the sheep to his path back all the way to his home. After uh, just a few hours of uh, of walking, um, you all approach. Excuse me. The oh my um, oh wow so rather than stone or glass the house before you seems to have been formed from the living branches of four sto- sturdy oak trees these have been shaped and woven to create three thick platforms the lowest of these platforms is roughly uh, 40 feet across and sits about 10 feet from the ground. The only obvious route up is a gentle slope formed of roots and branches and even various ropes um, that connects roughly to the main path. Um, branches curl at its base, creating a rough bowl shape around it. From where you stand, it's possible to see flowers and even small trees gnawing around its edge. By far, the largest of the three platforms is the middle one, which looks to be around 60 feet across. It's about 20 feet above the ground and is fully enclosed with a wall formed from twisting branches. You can see evenly spaced window-sized gaps, as well as what appears to be a door at the point closest to the garden platform. The final, tallest platform is roughly 30 feet above the ground and is much smaller than the others. Um... It looks to be linked to the central platform by a small slope. Scattered beneath the forms are two small wooden huts and a large outhouse. Um, as you guys... Ooh, me. Um, what angle are you guys approaching? You guys are stealthily looking at this through the tree line. I'd like um, to cast Mage Armor beforehand. Um, okay. Mage Armor and Mage Hand. All right. Um, um, you said this is like off the ground, like it's not connected to the ground at all. Yeah. So basically, imagine hmm. trees that come up and encircle and encase what is a. He wasn't wrong when he said it was a tree house. Right. right? It's but it's not a a tree house like we would imagine it. It's a house yeah, it's made. It's literally a tree. house that's been made out of a tree. Right. Brian like is going a to into a literal house. Not that. Brian is going to, uh, as an aside to the soup, just go. Have you been to the farewell? This is mm, seems influenced. No, but uh, I, I think it's mostly just that the wizard walked the tree itself into. No, but what I, know, I what but... I what I mean is that like this platform here, like it's the tree, right? The tree itself is like in the ground, and it like ends at the platform. Fucking. Can I climb? So I-, I should say, like, um, the map is deceiving. So just picture it with your head without the map. Even though I'm gonna click on it, this this one has walls encased in vines and trees, right? Like there are walls here, but they're just gnarly and wooden, um, and branchy and cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, where you would you can see the light spill through them, but it blocks it off fairly well. Um, and, uh, the first platform, the one that's closest to the ground, appears to be open, and you can see trees growing in it. Um, whereas the second platform appears to be almost like you have the, the base of a tree, it comes up, it spreads out, and then encompasses up over, if that makes sense. Um, and the same can be said for the third one. Got it. Um... How well would I remember the look of the Beastmaster? 
Wait, are you talking about the guy who was uh, chasing <laughs> after? Yeah. Yeah, uh, the guy hunting the sheep. You remember him? I I can. Do you want me to show you? I can. Uh, show you how how well Brian would remember it. How drunk were you? <laughs> I had uh, two drinks, and my con saves were okay. I can't, I can't tell you one way or the other, to be honest. Just if you remember, you remember. But here is the image. Um, the reason is that I'm going to try and accurately uh, do the face, so I think it's actually important how correctly I can do it. Hey, then uh, roll me uh, a deception check. I think that that would make sense. Or yeah, yeah. I'll take it. Oof! <laughs> I cannot remember it at all. I my face comes on and it looks like a goblin's face, and I'm like, "This is what that guy looks like, right?" No. No. Shit. Eh. What disturbing. I have an idea. Can I like make a minor illusion to like make no. a sort of image of the face, like you know, projected onto like the middle of the air? Sort of like a rough image with a minor illusion projection. Because I wasn't drunk at all last night, so I would be able to remember. I, I, I'm going to cast minor illusion. Uh, I think he looked something similar to this. All right. And I'm just going to practice getting that, right? Uh, okay. And then I'm going to... And then I'm going to look uh, back in my form. So we're waiting for the night. Um... Let's make a plan, and I'm going to assume we're in, like, this area here. Which like, area? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, like, behind trees. Yep. Being as stealthy as possible. So, um, so my idea, looking from this, is I could potentially climb up the trees and get up to this point here, but I might need a little bit of a jump start. Well, we could give you invisibility. That could help. I mean, I can enhance your ability. That could help as well. It's just that we have to... Well, I mean, if you really want to, we can do this the really fun way. I can shrink you and catapult you up. <laughs> <laughs> right, and kill me. And Yeah, you're probably right. And, no, no, I think he's onto something, and I make you invisible. Oh no. And you fly up there, this invisible comet. You smash through a window, and he goes, Who's throwing stones? And as he's looking down at us, you will be invisible and tiny in the room. Then, and if I, I make a big of show wind. of uh, making an attack, and he is going to get out the wand. And as soon as he gets out the wand, you use your stronger, more dexterous self to pull it. Also, I mean that I can be as strong as or dexterous as I want in this form. Question: If I cast gust of wind and make the wind like you know angled and like pointed upwards, can I boost him all the way up with a gust of wind? Not if he would. No, no. He still he just decreases by one size. You wouldn't be able to do it to a rabbit. You wouldn't be able to. It's actually would reduce. But him what down if the? Size of a what what if the rabbit had what if the goblin um had a big leaf over the top of his head to make a parachute? Okay. Um going down by one side. During, <laughs> I'm messing around. During this, um you all have taken the time to do a patrol, I assume. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I need somebody to roll me a stealth check. Um, whoever is going to be doing the, the patrolling. I'm going to be guiding whoever's doing that patrolling. Um, I'll do the patrol because I think I have the highest stealth. Is that with advantage or is that a or is that a bonus? It's just a bonus. You okay. get plus D4. Plus D4. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? Oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. All right, and I'll take it. Okay, okay. So, um, as you, uh, 
you make your way uh, quickly around um, the the abode. Um, as you go past, you notice um, uh, several apes that are um, scattered about. Some of them playing with oversized with an oversized pair of dice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in the uh, uh, as you glance into the first uh, um, room and a couple of them are lounging about um, passively uh, uh, like either napping or or whatnot. You do notice all of them um, have great iron swords that appear to be like stuck into the ground next to them or laying down. Jesus. Um, and as you walked past, you noticed that there was a bear that made his way to the outhouse. Um, for just a moment, um, he uh, he looks about, hand on the door of the outhouse, and sniffs the air. You see his uh, his brown fur fur rustle um, in the um, in the wind as he looks about with his dark beady eyes before. He stops and walks back into the into the outhouse. Um, it doesn't. It's not hard to tell. Um, it's not hard to tell that it smells particularly bad. <laughs> Bear poop. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, you you aren't able to get uh, close enough to the. Uh, to the domes to be able to like peer inside and see what's going on, um, but uh, you do see that there is a flicker of light uh, through the brush and bramble. Uh, do you want to go out? We have more than an hour for me to long rest while uh, this is happening. Long rest. Do you want to go? Oh, short rest. Mm. Do you want to go again with invisibility on you this time? Yeah, let's do it. All right, now I'm gonna cast invisibility. Okay, just invisibility. I can't concentrate on guidance uh, and okay. invisibility right. at the same time. Okay. Um, and in that case, uh, you would be able to redo a, a scout mission again, uh, this time with advantage. All right, rolling stealth with advantage. And he can't be seen, which is nice. Nat 20! Yes! Nat 20! With oh. stealth, with advantage, with also uh, just because it is, like, invisible. Can I just sneak, yeah. like, all the way through then at this yeah, point? Actually, you, yeah, you know what? You steal, uh, you steal the sandwiches from their, uh, uh mini cooler. <laughs> and you just steal their lunch. So, as lunch. you, um,. As you make your way um, back towards again, do you uh, um, you're walking past the outhouse um, for this hour, and uh, uh, just as you do, um, the 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 door slaps open, and you see uh, the brown bear that you saw go in come out and stretch. Uh, the door uh, <laughs> narrowly, uh, not narrowly. You definitely jump out of the way of the door as you uh, as, he, as it flew open. Um, it appears that the bear does not notice you. He kind of plops down on the ground, gives his ears a little scratch with one of his back legs as he uh, as he makes his way um, up uh, up to. Oh, hold on. I didn't realize I had. Huh. We have as no he bear makes. Token. <laughs> yeah, as uh, as he makes his way out and uh, uh, plops down um, inside uh, of the uh, of the first dome, um, you hear the, the like the. Uh, the straining of the uh, of the wood um, in these little the wood bridges slash stairs that make their way through um, as he makes his way up you sneak right behind him um, and 
find yourself in the middle of uh, of the first dome uh, with a bear and three uh, uh, three apes all just um, blazing about playing with dice. Um, you notice that everything is open um, to get from in this dome. However, in the major dome, uh, there is a uh, appears to be a door um, blocking your path. But you have not been noticed. And I suppose at this point I wouldn't know that the door is locked. You don't know. Not yet. You'd have to go up to it. Hmm. And at this point, how fu how high up is that bridge? Um, the bridge in front of you is, uh... It, it's a little tall. It's, um... You do about 20 feet above the ground. Okay. And of course, you see the wall formed uh, around it and the twisting branches. Yep. Just trying to think if I get discovered, can I jump down from that bridge and land decently safely? Maybe. You've done the jump before. Yeah. Yeah, in that case, I'm just going to. Sneak my way past these guys very, very discreetly. Nobody knows I'm here. No. Oops, I thought I had to let go of the. There we go. Up to the door. Um. It does appear to be locked. But thieves luckily, tools, you have thieves' tools. I do have thieves' tools, and I can use my uh, dexterity with that. Uh huh. Cause you got proficiency as well too. I sure do. So you should. So yes. There you go. You got it. It should prompt you. Yep. You uh, pretty easily are able to uh, pop the lock on this door. It is by no means a complicated one. Mm. And uh, you step into the main... The main room. Let me pop this guy here real quick. <laughs> I... I take it that's the guy. Mm -hmm. Um. So as you walk into the room, um, you notice this appears to be a, a sort of large work room uh, with papers and books strung about in many different directions, and a uh, and a and a frazzled um, middle-aged man um, working uh, vigilantly at at a desk. He appears to be rubbing his uh, his temples. Um, with one hand looking uh, contemplatively at a uh, um, at a piece of paper before slamming it down and putting both of his hands in between his head, um, he sits like that for just a moment um, before he stands up and uh, walks his way through this door. Goodness gracious, this is giving me issues. Um, as he walks his way through the, uh, the door and in towards the kitchen, where he appears to be making himself a spot of tea. Um. I conveniently, I, like I see he him. leaves. Because of your stealth roll, he, he conveniently leaves the doors open. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, well then, I'm just going to sneak my way over here. Sorry, Ed, man. 
just uh, open up this door here and sneak onto the bridge. Okay. Um, as you get onto the bridge, uh, you notice the door to the smaller one is locked. I'm going to try my thieves tools on this one as well. I'm going to make sure I close the door behind me, actually, before I do that. Because okay. I don't want him to think that uh, something's going on here. Okay. Um, you are able to pop the lock. It is a little louder than you expected um, as you kind of like glance about to make sure nobody saw you. Uh, but you were able to successfully uh, um, get right into uh, um, into what appears to be um, uh, Noak's bedroom. Um, not much is going on here. You see um, you see um Containing little beyond a wardrobe, um, a large wooden bed, and a cluttered dressing table. Um, as you look up onto the dressing table, you see a variety of like uh, clothing and more papers and more books. Uh, there seems to be uh, just a, a surplus of them. Um, and DM. Uh, yes. I'm sorry uh, for interrupting. I have a question. If I'm concentrating on invisibility, do I know roughly where the source of my concentration is? Well, it says written, no. I know. I'm asking Emily you, how she you, would read I mean... I have an idea in mind. be too overpowered, because if you concentrate on a spell and then an enemy turns invisible, like, you just know where they are, right? I said roughly, as in like cast like, pain on an enemy. They you would as you would pretty easily assume that he is probably within the building at this point. Otherwise, he would have been made his way all the way back by now. Okay. Well, um, I have an idea. I'm I would gonna like to... roll. Hold on. Can sorry, you have an idea. You're okay. I have an idea. I would like to search the room first before I enact said idea. Okay. Uh, roll me an investigation check. Hot bar. Okay. okay. Uh, it's an eleven. Um, not much other than uh, a variety of papers, um, s mentioning uh, uh, various types of complicated magic and um, drawings that are a little bit beyond your comprehension. Um, <laughs> in really, really terrible handwriting. Um, <laughs> just like part of you is like, is it just the bad handwriting, or is it? the fact that this is talking about something I don't know. A brief second you thought this might have been in a different language, but it's hard to tell. Um, it's almost common. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that, that's it. Uh, you find uh, a variety of uh, trinkets and the like uh, worth a, a total of about three gold. <laughs> ah, so sweet! Free money. And trinkets. Okay. Just put three. Just put three gold in your thing. Okay, fine. Uh, I'm going to roll a d3 uh, using a d6 um, to try and see whether I correctly guess where um, Moonzik is out of the towers. I still have an idea. I know. I want to talk to you. This is message. Oh, okay. Well, never mind about my idea, then. If it uh, works. That is a one, which is the correct one. Sorry, I did that on physical dice, because there's not a macro. Yes, there is. You can just type slash roll d3. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. works with any oh, number. Yeah, actually, that like is better than trying to like do a d6. Like. So, uh, one d3. Sure. We'll do this again. Because it's cool to roll d3 instead of d6s. Ah, <laughs> oh, no. So it whiffs. It only works if I'm familiar with the target and know they are beyond the barrier, so it wouldn't yeah. trigger. So you're just going to hear me whispering. Actually, it's a cantrip. I'm just going to point at each one until I get a response. That works. Yeah. 
Are you in? Are you in? Are... Yes, I'm in. I'm in his bedroom, actually. I made it to the third tower. Oh my god. Um. He left all his doors open for me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you think with the invisibility you might be able to get the wand? Is he doing something that keeps his hands preoccupied? Uh, he went into the kitchen. If he's cutting something, he won't have either hand on where the wand is. This is might be a breath shot. This is true, but if I mess up, I'm not going to be able to come out of it. True. The other thing I was thinking of is scouting out up here until nightfall until he goes to sleep and then searching his pockets. It on it, uh... Invisibility only has a one hour duration and it's range of touch. I could hide under his bed. I'm guessing I can. I'm, like... There's space under his bed, yeah. Yeah, I can... Yeah. Would it be suspicious if I sent a crow? Into incredibly so. This uh, these are knowledgeable wizards. They know about fan familiar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. I guess. Um. At this point, I'm just spamming message back and forth. Um. All right. Uh. Up to you. Just let me know which one you're doing. I could try to sneak in there, but like I said, if I fail, I'm likely going to be turned into an animal. Or there's going to be a scuffle that brings all the gorillas and the bear up to our level. If we see the gorillas and the bear moving, um, perhaps we make a distraction for the gorillas and the bear. It's possible. Also, at the end of the day, even if you fail, you'll st uh, right now, you'll still be invisible. Stealing doesn't break it. That's true, but... he I'm sure he has other spells he could use to find out where I am. I'm sure. It's up to you. True polymorph doesn't work on invisible targets, though. That's reassuring. If I fail at it, and then I could hide under his bed. How if much you fail at it, I think you should head out. He'll be far more on alert for somebody in his abode. That's true, but at the same time, he's going to bolster his front defenses as well. It's going to be harder to get in than it's going to get back out again. Up to you. I'll go for it. And if I do fail at the first attempt, I am going to hide under his bed, I think. Alright. Alright. And with that, I am going to do 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 do. Oh wait, hang on. Actually, it's going to be right there that we're going to take a break. All right. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All Stress. Right. <laughs> Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. All right. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining this first part of session 19. We'll see you all shortly with uh, part. Twitch.tv/slash Frigid Hyperion. Damn it. <laughs>